May God be lifted in your life and may you be lifted through and in God. Welcome to Be Lifted. War against destiny diversion. The first point I want you to understand is this. Anytime God has an assignment to do, anytime God has something to carry out, the first thing he looks for is a man or a woman that he can use for that purpose. And so as you read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you begin to see one eternal principle which does not change. One man for a season, another man for another season, one man for a season. As you begin to read the Bible, read the Bible, all of a sudden you come across Abraham. Abraham was a symbol of faith. As you read, 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 you come across Jacob again. Jacob represents wrestling with God in prayer. As we don't know, no, 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 no. you start reading about Moses. He represents deliverance. As we read on and on, you get to Isaiah. You got to people like Elijah, the prophet of fire. A man for a season. Everyone here tonight, you are in this world for a particular assignment. And the earlier you locate that assignment, the better. But then there is a great problem. There is a diversion going on. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 9, verse 15. Acts 9, 15. You see the destiny of somebody well laid out. Acts 9, 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for it is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So that was the destiny of Paul. Jesus himself, in the book of John chapter 9, John chapter 9 verse 4, he said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comment when no man can walk. Jesus knew what he was here to do. In the book of John again, chapter 4, verse 34. John 4, 34. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So that's my meat. To do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. War against destiny diversion. Destiny. When somebody says destiny, he's talking about, about 25 things. But all the 25 things mean one thing. Number one, your destiny is God's purpose for your life. Number two, your destiny is the divine agenda for your life. Number three, your destiny is the reason why you were born. Number four, your destiny is why God created you and allowed to come to this earth. Number five, your destiny is what God has written in this book concerning your life. Definitely, there are things God has written concerning each life. Number six, your destiny is what has been written in the records of heaven concerning your life. For heavens have records. Something has been written about you in their record. Number seven, your destiny is what God had in mind when he fashioned you and sent you to this earth. I'm holding a microphone now. Somebody manufactured it. Before the person manufactured it, he had something in mind. That this instrument is to amplify voices. To amplify sound. So, what God had in mind before he fashioned you and sent you here is your destiny. 
Number eight, your destiny is the expectation of heaven for your life. What the heavens expect from you. Number nine, your destiny is the original divine intention for your life. The original divine intention for your life. Number ten, your destiny is the divine blueprint for your life. The divine blueprint for your life. Number 11, your destiny is what God has created you to do and become in life. What he has created you to do and to become. Number 12, your destiny is the divine plan and purposes for your life. The divine plan and purposes for your life. Number 13, your destiny is what heaven has programmed your life to do on this earth. What everyone has programmed your life to do on this earth. Number 14, your destiny is a divine road map for your life. The divine road map for your life. Every life has a road map. Once you travel the wrong road map or you don't have your road map, you miss your destiny. Number 15, your destiny is why you exist. Why you are existing, why you are even breathing. 16, your destiny is your appointed or ordained future. 17, your destiny is your mission here on earth. 18, your destiny is your portion in this life. Number 19, your destiny is the divine knowledge about your life. The divine knowledge about your life. Number 20, your destiny is that which you were placed on earth to complete and to perfect. 21, your destiny is your ordained contribution to this world. God did not create anybody to just come and be a consumer. You too must contribute something. 22, your destiny is your one thing. One thing. That is, if we are put on earth here to do just one thing, that one thing is your destiny. 23, your destiny is finding your place in this world. 24, your destiny is where you fit in the scheme of things on earth. And lastly, 25, your destiny is the instruction that your manufacturer has loaded into you to fulfill in life. When you say destiny, it could mean any of those 25 things or all of those 25 things. I want you to listen to me very carefully. In God's master plan, each human being is distinct from another human being. The great creator personally designed and made you the way you are. So in God's sight, nobody is a washout, nobody is a failure. Because God is not a washout, God is not a failure, God does not create failures. So no one is a dropout in the agenda of the Almighty. Whether you like it or not, every creator of God has a value. And they are not inferior, they are not inferior to anyone. You may be different, yes, but not inferior. It will be different, yes, wonderfully different, but not in video. So, when you are on earth here, you are God's idea, and God does not make mistakes. Therefore, if you now miss that destiny, the Bible says it would have been better if the person was not born. And once you have a destiny, there are several other destinies attached to your own destinies. This is why you cannot afford to fail until you arise. Several people may not rise. This is why I prophesy unto your life tonight that wherever you are, listen to me here, whether you like it or not, be catapulted to your next level. Be catapulted. Rise. Be catapulted to your next level. Be catapulted, be catapulted, be catapulted to your next level. Be catapulted in the name of Jesus. The words I'm speaking to you now are prophetic words. 
but I'll be catapulted to the next level. It means here, if you are a tenant, move and build. It means if you are confused, move and be clear. It means if you are being trampled upon, it means arise and shine. It means if the enemy has put a chain on your neck, it means you should remove the chain and put it back on the neck of the enemy. I prophesy once again, be catapulted to your next level. Rise, rise and be catapulted. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, believe his prophets and you shall prosper. I say it again the next time. Be catapulted to your next level. By the power in the blood of Jesus, move to that next level. Move. Whether the enemy likes it or not. In the name of Jesus. Because until some of us rise, several people may not rise. Until some of us have received deliverance, several people will not receive deliverance. Madness is necessary for you sometimes to move to where God wants you to move to. What lies within you as a child of God is greater than what is going on around you. The Lord did not get you born again, get you saved, so that they trample upon your head forever. It's a very, very serious matter. All the sisters who are here, you must move and rise. Amen. So that if somebody is even giving you a slap, the person should realize that he is slapping an inspector general of police. He is slapping the managing director of a company. He is not just slapping any woman. You must move. And until you wake up that you are sleeping giants within you, you will never be able to bless your generation. And one of the promises of God for our life is that you shall be a blessing. But you cannot be a blessing when you are down. You cannot make somebody rich when you are poor. You cannot be scoring zero in mathematics. I want to train somebody to score A. My sadness as I'm standing here now, and the reason for this kind of message, is because I see many believers, human gold mines, but they die as paupers. They die as paupers. They carry the gold mine to the cemetery, unused, unutilized, useless, not performing any function. And it's a very sad thing. Diversion. So much for destiny. Diversion. A policeman was giving a testimony in court, and he explained to the judge that these boys who have been arrested for stealing in the shop said, my lord, they don't have weapons, they don't use weapons, they use a technique called diversion. The judge said, what do you mean by diversion? He said, my lord, he said, many of them will come into the shop, then half of them will go to one side of the shop, and they will start a fight. Bah, bah, blow, blow, hey, hey, hey. So everybody will rush here, don't fight, don't fight. Why people are separating them? The other group, they have stolen what they wanted to steal. And they have walked out. Then immediately they see that their colleagues have stolen things and they have gone out. They stop fighting. And they walk out. The shop owners did not know. It's the same group. They have just used a method called diversion. They remove the attention of the shop owner from them to somewhere else. They are now able to do what they plan to do. So to divert is to turn aside. One man of God has said, the only thing you need to do in a car to go back to where you are coming from, just turn it a little bit to the other side. Diversion is like a detour on the highway. Diversion is distraction from the main business. Diversion. Some politicians are experts at diversion. Sometimes you see them on television, you begin to laugh. They ask him one question. 
He's busy answering another question. He said, there is no water in this village. He is telling that the director of uh, uh, ministry of something has just been sacked. That is oh, not what they ask. Him. So he's diverting your attention away from your question to another thing. A diversion is a deviation, a maneuver that draws your attention away from the main point of action. Unfortunately, many of us don't know that unto every man with a destiny, there is always a conspiracy in the spirit realm. To every man with a colorful destiny, there is always a rage from the bottom of hellfire. If you see somebody with a colorful destiny, listen to me clearly. The enemy will not leave you alone. You are like a marked man in the field of play. A marked man, a dangerous forward player. Sometimes in football, if they feel that a man is too dangerous, they attach two or three people to be running after him. You are a marked man. And that mark was already with you in your mother's womb. That's why it's possible for some satanic diviners to look at a newly born baby and say, this one shall be great. They can see the mark. They can see that mark. It's there already. Unfortunately, some have lost the mark now. Some are practicing to lose it. Some are at the edge of losing it. Some never grew up with it because it was taken away when they were young. To every man with a destiny, there is always a conspiracy in the spirit realm. If you see a child with a colorful destiny, they start to attack that child from a young age. This is a very serious matter. There was a boy born somewhere, and by his destiny, he was supposed to be very brilliant. The enemy seen his colorful destiny provided a grandmother who believed that the only way to look after a small baby is to be mopping their head with hot rag every morning. And that woman used the hot rag to dissolve the brain of the little boy. She used the hot rag to kill the brain cells. So by the time the boy grew up, we say one plus one, we say two hundred. The destiny has been altered. To every man who is now determined to fulfill his destiny, there is always a counter attack in the spirit realm. Unto every Moses, there is a Pharaoh. If you are a Moses here today and your Pharaoh is pursuing you, the Pharaoh shall die. <laughs> Unto every Joseph, there is always a Potiphar's wife. He will be saying, Come lie with me. Come, lie with me. If Joseph has slept with Potiphar's wife, he will never become the prime minister. Come, he says, lie with me. But that young boy, I did just 17, said, no, how can I do this and offend God? No wonder he was able to fulfill his own destiny. All the people that are here, the enemy will say, come, lie with me, come, lie with me. And you don't know, it's an invitation of the enemy. And you have already done it. God have mercy on you. And to every Elijah, there is always a, an Ahab and Jezebel. And to every David, there is always a Goliath. If you are a David here today, and there is a Goliath threatening your destiny, before you leave this garden tonight, the Goliath shall be buried alive. War against destiny diversion. I've explained to you destiny. I've explained to you diversion. Now, war. War. Lack of understanding of the principles of warfare, spiritual warfare, will always lead to destiny diversion. A man was slated for destruction by evil powers. He slept one night and he woke up to find out somebody has cut his hair. He just woke up and blew some grammar and said it's one of those things. He was having regular sex in the dream. He said, well, it's hallucination. So he took Valium tablet so I can sleep deeper. 
He had a wife. His wife packed out. Oh, he said, well, women are like that. He developed hypertension and diabetes. He said, well, he's hereditary. So that's what killed uh, daddy. That's what killed granddaddy. So he explained everything away. And somebody invited him to a crusade. And at the crusade, they gave a prayer point. Every ancestral power. Lose your hold upon my destiny. He didn't pray. He turned to the person close to him. Oh no, oh no. Tell these people to let the ancestors rest. Why are they harassing these people who have gone? By the time he wanted to start fighting, it was too late. It was too late. If there is no value in warfare, Human beings will not be teaching themselves principles of warfare. Military schools will not be having what they call war colleges. There in the war colleges, they teach principles of war. Because they know if you neglect it or you ignore it, defeat or destruction may follow because you don't understand war. And if you don't know how to fight, the enemy will waste you. The principle is very simple. Fight or perish. I've shared this with you before. I shared it with the youth the other time. Right back there where I was in Akura many years ago, we had a madman in the marketplace called Lion of Judah. Lion of Judah will explain to you in the marketplace what your teacher cannot explain to you. If they taught us mathematics in class, and we don't understand, if you go to Lion of Judah in the marketplace, and say, Lion of Judah, they taught us mathematics, we don't understand. For a few minutes, his madness will clear away temporarily. With his finger in the soil, he will ask you, is it algebra? Is it trigonometry? Is it arithmetic? Is it geometry? If you identify the one you want, Lion of Gida will now sit down. With his finger on the soil, he will explain it to you the way that will make your teacher look stupid and foolish. He will say, Lion of Gida, they taught us history. I don't understand. He will explain it to you in the way that will make your history teacher look as if you never studied anything. Lion of Gida will bring out mouth organ from his pocket. He is the first fellow I will see playing mouth organ with his nose. Not mouth, nose. And he's playing music on it with his nose. But the same Lion of Judah, this person is a professorial brain. If you give him a plate of rice, he will pour the rice on the ground, he will mix it with sand, he will pack it back into the plates, then will begin to eat it with sand. Here was a man who has a high-flying destiny, but the enemy has wasted him in the marketplace. Can you raise up your voice like fire and like thunder? Every part are trying to waste my destiny. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. It. We are here for serious business. The Ripoka Pantanda, the Raboko Pandekaya Boshenterabo, the Nakatandera. Something is happening here. Something is happening here. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Yes, yes, yes. We are partly Katanda. In Jesus' name we pray. In human warfare, they teach certain principles. All those principles, they took it from the Bible. The principles of human warfare. Number one, they tell you, that in war, you must always have an objective. That is, a reason for fighting. They will teach you that one. You must have an objective. Number two, they tell you that in war, you must correctly identify the enemy. If you don't know who the enemy is, where the enemy is, how the enemy is planning, and you are armed, you are being armed is useless because you will direct your guns to the wrong places. They teach you that one. Number three, they teach you that a defending army never wins any war. You have to be on the offensive. 
That's the thing. A defending army never wins any war. If you put two people on the boxing ring, you say on the right corner, you find Ringo Ringo. On the left corner, you find Rondo Rondo. Both of them are going to fight. Three rounds. Three minutes each. And I said, box. And they get to the ring. And Rondo Rondo just put his arm on his face. He's defending his face. He's not throwing any blows. They will knock him out. That's why we keep saying, the best defense is attack. For they, te they teach you that you must concentrate your forces instead of scattering them all over. They teach you that one. Five. They teach you that ensure that you are secured. That is, you must have intelligence report about the enemy and what he wants to do. Six. They teach you that use surprise as a weapon to attack suddenly without warning so that the enemy will not know that you are even coming. Seven, they teach. Don't allow the enemy to destroy your communication lines. Don't let him destroy the communication line between you and your base. If you look at it, they are all scripture. Scripture. If they say don't allow the enemy to break your communication line with your base, it means don't allow the enemy to break your hearing from God. A Christian without adequate knowledge about spiritual warfare is a prey or chewing stick in the mouth of the enemy. In the battle of life, you must fight. You must understand the powers governing life and fight back. You must fight to defend yourself. You must fight to take back what belongs to you. When you are facing a wicked enemy, he will use disguise to begin to divert your attention. He will bury a problem deep into the person's body and that problem that is inside will be causing trouble outside. It's a great prayer when you begin to say, my internal enemies wither. Because many of us are looking for the enemy outside. But the enemy is already inside. There is a department in the kingdom of darkness. It is called the department of destiny destruction. It is from there they begin to divert people's destiny. Many men, women who are supposed to be shakers and movers in this world have been diverted from that department. This is a very, very sad thing. The enemy sometimes removes somebody from the fire and put the person inside the smoke. And you will know it's inside the smoke. As you are here tonight, if you find that with all the best you are putting into life, all your input and effort fail to get success, you have to pray against destiny diverters. You find that things are happening to you that you can't explain. And you wonder why it's happening to you. You need to pray against destiny diverters. You find those that you are better than moving forward, but you are going down. You need to pray against destiny diverters. You find that instead of going forward, you are going backward. And those who are inferior to you are excelling, but you are, you are more intelligent, you are going down. You need to pray against destiny diverters. All of a sudden, although you are not an old man, you find that you are losing your memory. You need to pray against destiny diverters. All of a sudden, you find that the husband you married many years ago when he had nothing at that time. Now that the man is rich, he now says, get out. You need to pray against destiny diverters. You find yourself being overshadowed by powers you cannot control. You are governed by power contrary to your will. You need to pray against destiny diverters. You are a very brilliant student. All of a sudden you are becoming dull and dull and you are beginning to fail now. We need to war against destiny diverters. You find a normal, obedient child is now becoming stubborn and disobedient. You find somebody who was formerly rich, now turning poor, and is gradually selling off all his property. You need to pray against destiny diverters. You can see that you have 
unreasonable moods and very bad temper which causes you regular problems you need to pray against destiny diverters you find that you have enslaving habits like sexual immorality and you cannot control yourself you need to fight against destiny diverters you are noticing sudden and periodic manifestation of problems then you should know that you are facing destiny diverters some are never well during rainy season you need to play well there is even a particular religion members always have problem in the month of may destiny diversion you are praying but the trash refuses to come to an end you need to pray against destiny diverters you are having regular dreams of communication with the dead and the bible says that the living has nothing to do with the dead you need to pray against destiny diversion a particular strange dream is always happening before you have a problem you are being fed with what you don't even like to eat in your dream we need to fight against destiny diverters the toughest area of prayers when we are praying this kind of prayer is the area when we need to challenge the powers the prayer of challenge must be done aggressively and tirelessly you have to pray until faith is born in your heart if you are praying and your faith is still moving like banana leaf better go back and pray if the storm of doubt is still sufficient to toss your faith go back and pray these are very serious issues when you are ready to fulfill your destiny you are now ready to achieve your potentials you are ready to depart from the school of endless drifting through life now you are ready to refuel your inner drive you are ready to now determine your future and pursue it you are now ready to locate who you really are you are now ready to think hard about the qualities you want to develop and results you want to achieve in life you are now ready to leave the bus stop of stagnation and move forward then you must be ready for a hot challenge these are the kind of prayers you pray and the enemy comes to you and says no uh, why are you praying that kind of prayer and as a counter attack when you leave the enemy to walk unmolested then they will eventually truncate or paralyze your destiny what is the way out of this number one is to become a friend of god know your god that's point number one two know your enemy know that the devil is wickedly wicked and badly bad number three live a holy life a holy life number four is a wage war against this destiny diverters wage war against destiny diverters and the next thing to do you have to work on your weaknesses and terminate those weaknesses you have to work on yourself because you are your greatest asset you are also your greatest detriment if you are not careful i stand there tonight to lament seriously on plenty of people who are human gold mines but no gold kings no throne managers no business landlords no house i'm very sad that many believers are in that position all because at one time or the other a diversion has come and the person is now pursuing the wrong thing and chasing shadows in the market of life sometimes when i travel abroad and i see people i say but go back home say i can't go back home i've been here hey, look you've been here for 17 years if i chief nothing go back home so we say well uh, please sir they give me some money I say you are begging me for money i came from nigeria you should be giving me money go home the no it's a case of diversion many people have been diverted like that some diverted to the wrong profession wrong wife wrong husband wrong business wrong course in university 
So the kind of prayers to recover these things is the prayer of challenge. And who do we challenge? The strong man in charge of the department called destiny destruction. The Bible says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and plunder his goods except you first bind the strong man. Because the strong man is armed and is protecting his things. The strong man is a king. The strong man is a military man. So if you just go there anyhow, he will punch you to nonsense and throw you out. It is that warfare we want to deal with here tonight. Rise up on your feet now. All eyes closed. This is not a day to negotiate. Remember, is there a day to joke? It's not a day to keep quiet while others are receiving their breakthroughs. It's not a day to be in a hurry. Because there are situations that need to change. Meaning that if we start a prayer now, and I've not seen what I want to see, I will not ask you to stop until things begin to happen. If you don't finish our prayers today, we we'll continue next Wednesday. If possible, we even have fasting to it. Because I see so many, so many of us who are supposed to be flying like eagle, but we're playing with chicken. Now, many of us who are supposed to be killing lions and killing tigers, but what are we killing? Mosquitoes and flies. Close your eyes, beloved. If you are here tonight and you are not born again, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, do so very quickly now. Because I want you to be part of tonight's blessing. Just raise up your right hand where you are and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Let Jesus come into my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you said I should pray with me, immediately we close, just find a way very quickly to the altar here so that we can pray more with you. All eyes closed. These prayers are not prayers to joke with. They are prayers you should pray with violence and with fire. And you will see what will begin to happen immediately you begin to pray. Sisters, are we here tonight? Sisters, say this after me loud and clear. Strong man assigned to divert my destiny. Is that the Lord as the sisters can say it tonight? <laughs> Brothers, can you shout it louder than the sisters? <laughs> Brothers, is that the Lord as you can shout this one? Everybody together now. In the name of Jesus. Protect us upon the Kaya Boshende. Barubo Kosopon the Kaya Boshende Rabba. Tanakatanda Rabo Soponde Kaya Boshenta Ribo Soponde Kaya Boshenta Rabba Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth There's a power of God coming upon you Something what's happened to you tonight Aha, aha, aha Yes, 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 yes In Jesus then we pray this next prayer, you will say it once and convert it to machine gun prayer. Say, I recover my destiny, I recover my destiny. by fire. fire. When you said that three hot times, you begin to say, I recover by fire. I recover by fire. I recover by fire. I recover by fire. Open your mouth and pray. Yes.
Ona ribo supoda kaya bo shanta. Desente de kaya bo shanta rabo kopola bakara bo shanta. Da ribo sombonde kaya bo shanta. Piari kaka patasa. Da ribo kosopo. Recover, 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 recover it. Jesus, when we pray, say, My glory, rise up and shine in the name of Jesus. Now that we rise up, rise up, shine. Shine, 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 Every ancestral power pushing down my head. Can you shout that loud and clear? Dead. In the name of Jesus, deal with the power now. In the name of Jesus. What the capenda kaya bo shenta rabo konta? Aha, 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 aha. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, let me pray. Aha. You see now, getting into very, very serious breakthroughs. You will now shout this loud and clear. Please make sure nobody's voice overshadow your voice in this particular one. Don't even say, I don't think I'm concerned. My destiny in the waters. In the name of Jesus, the one in the waters. Thank you for watching. God bless you.